If you already know about the problem, you can skip to the code at this timestamp, but if you don't, here's what it is. Basically, you are a game show contestant trying to win a car. The car is behind one of three doors, and behind the other two doors are goats. You choose one door. Then the game show host, named Monty Hall, eliminates another door by showing you that it contains goats. Then he asks you, do you want to stay with your original selection, or do you want to switch to this new found door and try to increase your odds? Most people will think I'll just stay with the same door because the odds of me winning if I switch are the same as the odds of me winning if I stay. However, that's where the problem kicks in. The solution to the problem is that actually, if you switch, you have a 2 in 3 chance of winning and if you stay, you have a 1 in 3 chance of winning the car. This was first proven in 1975 and was reproven and made very popular in 1990 by Marilyn Vossavant. Marilyn Vossavant was a really smart woman who was the person with the highest IQ recorded by the Guinness Book of World Records at the time and basically proved that the odds of winning if you switch are 2 in 3. She received a lot of hate for this, mostly because she was a woman and a lot of men thought she didn't know what she was talking about, but today using a few lines of Python we will prove her correct and prove her haters wrong. So let's get into the code. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do in our code is import the random module. This will allow us to choose a random door to put our car behind. Next, we're gonna create our doors and we are gonna store our doors as a list and it's gonna have three elements and each of them is gonna be a string containing either the word car or zonk. In the original game show, zonk is what you would call it when you open the door and you'd have goats behind it. So we're gonna be using that word. To start out with, we're gonna have three zonks and then we're gonna choose a random one to have our car behind. So to choose a random one to have a car behind, we're gonna do doors at the index of random.randint so this will return a random integer between the numbers 0 and 2, including 2. So this element is now going to be equal to car. So how this simulation is going to work is that we're going to choose the first door to start out with. Then we're going to eliminate a door with a zonk behind it. Then we're going to switch to the other door. So we basically need to eliminate one of the zonks in the last two doors. Then we'll have a list with two elements in it, and we can choose the last one, which is always going to be the one that we should switch to. So firstly, we're going to check if the second door has a zonk behind it. We're going to remove it from the list. So we can say doors dot pop at the index of one. This will remove the element in the list at the index of one. We're gonna say elif doors two is equal to song. Then doors dot pop two. So after all of this, the chosen door is gonna be the second door. So we're gonna say chosen door equals doors one. So this will be the second door. Now we can go ahead and print chosen door to see what happened. If we go ahead and run this, we have a 66% chance of printing car. So if we run it three times, we should get car twice and zonk once. So we get car, zonk, and zonk. So we actually did not get car 66% of the time. And this is because this is a very small sample size. We only ran it three times. If we ran it something like 100,000 times, I guarantee that our results would line up. So the way we can do this is by using a for loop. We're going to create a variable called iterations that stores how many times we're going to run this simulation. We're gonna set it to 100,000 to start out with. Next, we can go ahead and create a for loop with that. And then add an indentation to all of this code. Instead of printing chosen door, we're going to create two variables that store how many times we got a car and how many times we got a zonk. So we're going to say if chosen door is equal to car, then car count plus equals one, else zonk count plus equals one. And we can go up here and create those two variables. And finally, at the end, we'll print out car count and zonk count. So we're going to say print 
then we're going to create an F string, which is basically a formatted string that allows us to pass in data dynamically. And we're going to say car, add two spaces, then car count. Notice how I'm using braces to pass in my variable in the string. Next, we're going to convert this to a percentage. So we're going to say equals, and then more curly braces. And we're going to put in car count divided by iterations times 100, which is going to give us the percentage. But we want this to be rounded to one decimal point. So we're going to go ahead and say round. And we're going to pass in one as the second parameter. Then we're going to include a percentage sign and then copy and paste this for the zonk count. Now we're actually done our code and we can go ahead and run this to see what happens. And as you can see, we get car 66,634 times, which is equivalent to 66.6% .6 of the time. We get zonk 33,366 times, which is equal to 33.4%. And no matter how many times we run this, we're always going to get something that is similar to this. 66.5 and 33.5, 66.4 and 33.6, and so on. And so now we've successfully simulated the Monty Hall problem, but you may still be wondering why we get these results. You may still think that it is a 50-50 chance. However, if you have 100 doors instead of 3 doors, the example will probably shift your understanding. Let's say you have 100 doors and you choose door 1 as your initial guess. Then I eliminate 98 doors and give you the option of either sticking with door 1 or switching to this door that may contain a zonk or may contain a car. What would you be inclined to do? Would you rather stay or switch? You'd obviously switch, right? Because you think there's no way I got it right on the first try. It's probably this random one that is correct. And that's just intuitive. But the reason behind that is that there's a 99% chance you were wrong on the first guess. However, when I remove 98 options from the 99% chance that was correct, I'm only left with one option that still has the value of 99% chance of being correct. Now, scaling this back down to three doors, if I remove one of the doors and give you this option, I still have a 66% chance of winning if I switch because the probability remains the same. I hope this shifts your understanding and now you understand the Monty Hall problem. That's going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. If you enjoyed, consider liking and if you really enjoyed, consider subscribing because nobody subscribed. I hope to see you in the next video, but until then, have a good day.